Hi everyone and welcome to Vintage Digitals. Today we are going to do the follow up episode to the digital watch repair tools and now we are going to do the advanced tools. A while ago we did the beginner tools and as you've seen those tools are somewhat common to uh, the watch repairs if we're talking in terms of mechanical watches. But today's episode is the advanced tools and as you will see this is more like an electronics lab repair. But we do have some common tools here as well. So I've lined them up all here and we are going to start off with the ones that you would uh, have even if you do mechanical watches going on to the electronics one. So let's kick it off with the ultrasonic cleaner. The ultrasonic cleaner that I have, it's not the name brand, it's Digital Pro. It has time adjustment in how long you want the ultrasonic to work and then it uh, automatically stops. And it also has a temperature setting, which means it also heats uh, the cleaning fluid. Uh, I bought mine for, I think it was around $60. It has a two liter vessel. And in terms of power rating, it is, yeah, the ultrasonic is a 70 watt and the heating is 50 watt and the frequency 40 kilohertz. I don't know what this means, but it does the job. If you have the possibility to get a proper watch washing machine, like I think Elma does one, and it's with those vessels and uh, with the rotary dryer, get one of those, it will run you more, but in terms of watches, it will work better. But this one will suffice and trust me, this saves you time. The next tool that I recommend is one of the most important tools. And I'm sorry I didn't put this one I kind of regret it in the beginner uh, watch repair tools because this got me very far in repairing watches. Being able to see in detail will help you know how the watch comes together. Some faults are easily visible if you have enough magnification. So yeah, absolutely get one. Mine is a Novex AP4 and it has 20x magnification. Uh, it has a 2x and ocular and the ocular uh, the oculars here are 10x which means it's a 20x and these are interchangeable if you want to get higher or lower magnification 20x really helps uh, there wasn't a situation where it did more or less be aware of the fact that to work under this the, your tools cannot be tall so if you think you can get a screwdriver here it has to be a smaller screwdriver in height the next tool is a soldering station and the soldering station from here on we're going to start with the tools that you will find in an electronics lab. The soldering station is important, you will end up having to replace parts on a board and to be able to uh, take them off or put them back on you will need a soldering station. Mine is again not a name brand, it's Toolcraft, this same form factor with the same specifications can be found on uh, other manufacturers. Do get one with an adjustable temperature and it is ESD safe. You want that to protect your watch against static charges. And I, mm, let's see what's the power rating on this one. 75 watts. So when working with such small parts, it will be mostly surface mount uh, technology or through hole. Do get sharp tips. And one important thing are the consumables. So if you get uh, the solder wire, get the thinnest you can. Mine is 0.5 millimeters. Uh, I believe you can get even thinner than that. A brand that I recommend, Stano, they are very good. And uh, you will also need some flux. And this is very important. It's called a solder wick and it's a braided copper. And this is used to extract uh, solder from the parts that are already on the board. It helps you when uh, taking down parts, when removing them. I am not going to talk anymore about this. If you want a soldering course, there are plenty on YouTube. This would run you around $70. Don't go too far below that or you might not get something of quality. The next tool is a so-called Dremel tool, but it's a rotary mill. And uh, mine is a Proxen, and uh, this is used in so many jobs. You've seen me uh, polish this using the wire braid, well, the wire uh, brush to clean off corrosion. 
you can get a Dremel, you can get the Proxon one. If it's around 40 to $50, that's all that you need. You don't need more. Mine is a 12 volts, two amp. It's not that powerful. I can hold this end uh, with almost no force. Uh, you don't need more than that. If you wanna get a more powerful one, do so, but it will be, uh, it will cost you more. Make sure it has adjustable RPM. Mine goes from 5,000 up to 20,000 RPM. Uh, you won't need 20,000 RPM, but uh, you will need somewhere in between five and 10,000 RPM. And yeah, they, they usually come with accessories. Make sure you get buffing accessories, cutting accessories, uh, brushing and cleaning accessories. Now we are going to get into more advanced equipment. And this is an oscilloscope or a scope. And if you ever wondered how you can tell if the output channels uh, for the LCD work, well, this is the equipment that tell you, tells you that. The output signals that go to your segments, in case you have dead segments, you would want to know if those channels work. Uh, the waveform for that is a square, and I'm going to insert uh, either a picture or a video here for you to see how a signal like that looks. And this equipment can actually read that, so you can tell if those outputs are working or not. And another thing it can measure is your quartz crystal. Now, your quartz crystal isn't only involved in uh, calculating the time uh, as a time base for the second, it also helps in making that square waveform I've talked about earlier. So the crystal is also involved in making your LCD work. So you can see that this can help you diagnose if you have a bad LCD or a bad output from the chip very valuable and another thing where you can use this is if you have an ana digi watch and you wondered hey the lcd is working but my uh, analog part is not well the analog part also has a special signal output that you can measure with this uh, i'll also in insert uh, one of those waveforms so yeah you can tell if that analog output works or not because there is a fault on the chip or there is something else maybe stuck gears or something like that so mine is a Velman HPS 140i I bought this used for $80 uh, but now I've seen them on Amazon for up to $200 I wouldn't go ahead and buy one for $200 maybe you can find them for less but you have to be careful in the specifications if you want to read a crystal that's 32 kilohertz so make sure it measures let's say well beyond 32 kilohertz mine measures 10 megahertz so it's well equipped to measure a crystal and yeah it's one of the most useful tools to diagnose uh, bad LCDs and bad output channels now here and uh, let's just say that the other tool that would be nice to have in the lab, you're probably not going to need it uh, as often, is a signal generator. And signal generators, well, uh, they don't come in this form. This is something else I use. You can just look up on the internet signal generators. And one way you can use the signal generator is if you validated that the output for the analog part of your ANA Digi works, then you might want to see if the gears are stuck and rather than moving them with your hand, you can actually use a signal generator to generate the signal uh, that go in input for that uh, analog part. A signal generator can do that for you. And what I have here is, uh, well, it's an Arduino and I write, I write the software routines on it and I use the output channels to output that signal. Basically, the signal generator and the oscilloscope go hand in hand. The output signal that you read through with an oscilloscope, you should be able to re replicate through the signal generator. So those are the tools uh, for the advanced part. And uh, yes, some of them uh, are more like an electronics lab and uh, do require more knowledge to use them. For either of them, you can find detailed, detailed videos on YouTube how you can use them. Depending on the repair jobs you want to do, 
you might not need them or you might need them so give it a good thought before you start buying uh, electronic repair tools because you might end up with having a soldering station or an oscilloscope which are not cheap uh, just having them collecting dust thanks for watching this video i hope i didn't bore you too much uh, join me for the next video. I try to release as often as I can digital watch related videos, tools, reviews, uh, repairs and so on. Until next time, bye!